Uh, it's a spirit, it's what it is, it moves on you. Like, come on, be a Pentecost. The first time I got bit, well, it was, uh, I guess, like taking a shot, you know, from a doctor or something. It's about, you know, it, 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 uh, it hurts some and burnt some. I find these snake churches an interesting curiosity. And I had to suffer for it. And that, I don't, you know, people sort of say, oh, these guys are crazy, but I, I, I don't sort of see it that way. I'm not really crazy, because I'm a snake handler, and, uh, you know, and they can sort of handle snakes without being crazy. I sort of a respect, strange as it seems, because you haven't got a religion that's not, you know, it's, it seems very honest, something very sincere about this uh, religion. Sincere in that, you know, it's not like the TV evangelists that are all there and, you know, we all know that it's all about money. But these guys, you know, when, when they get bitten by a snake and they don't seek medical attention, it's a bit crazy, but at the same time, it's also, I don't know about brave, but also very much a, a, a religion that uh, really believes in what it's saying. I think we. Uh, live in a world where so many people don't mean what they say. They, yeah, you got, we're, we're in a world where people lie, people fake stuff. But these guys are not fakers, they don't lie. They, and, and he went on to say, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. I'm one of them believers, I believe the signs that follow. So I'm painting this parody of American Gothic, not to poke fun at the snake handling people, if anything, probably the opposite. Because there are bits of it I sort of find endearing. Although that comes from a very uneducated point of view, in that I've uh, not actually attended one of their meetings. But I think it's, there's more there than to just dismiss it as being crazy. It's interesting that it's, uh, you know, it's, it's like a tough culture. Um, yeah, we're talking about hillbillies, moonshine, and, you know, family feuds, gunfights. It's a tough culture, and I think it's often these tough cultures, these um, rough cultures that will come out with a religion that sort of equals that. It's almost like a cultural response to violence and to you know, how hard it is to survive in those places. It's almost like, like I say, a response to that is when you look at the religion. And the religion is, uh, you know, it's a tough religion. I was serving down there for a number of years and he had been bitten nine times previously. The only thing I'd probably say that uh, might even be remotely against him is possible cruelty to the animals. But I sort of think, well, you know, if they're not being cruel, cruel to the animals, why not let these people worship they want to worship? America's supposed to be a place of freedom of religion. Uh, he was bit in the temple and he died. So in the background here I've got a sign saying full gospel church. It's going to say of oh, God behind him. That goes behind the back of his head but I thought it was important to see full gospel because you know they're believing in every little bit of it. You know a real fundamentalist belief that you know every little bit should be taken seriously. 
the other things I love about this church is that um, I was reading a book, I read this great book called They Shall Take Up Serpents and then it, um, they don't wear ties, they see ties as a sign of pride and I think that's pretty cool and so when I was drawing American Gothic I was thinking up some ideas I noticed the guy's wearing overalls and it just reminded me of a few times when this church um, they had to go to court and when they went to court they were just wearing shirts or they were wearing overalls they weren't getting dressed up so again, you know, respect for that I wasn't clothes up. I died a couple of times, they said. I lost, lost my remembrance. Media's always looking to, for an angle, and you sort of paint these guys as being crazy. Well, that's an angle that they'll go with. So I'm not saying that I agree with what they do. What I'm saying is I have a, a measure of respect for what they're doing. And it's just hardcore stuff. If, it, if I'm carried out by a serpent bite, that'd be all right too. I'm in this thing to stay. Now when it comes to picking up a snake who's free like that, yeah, there's an element of risk, but isn't there an element of risk in lots of things? When I was travelling in America, I saw in some states there were bikers driving around without any helmets because you're allowed to in certain states. Well, isn't that an element of risk? Yes, things can go wrong, but if they are, are treating the snake quite nicely, it's unlikely the snake will bite. But, you know, there's a risk there. And so they take that risk, and well, why not? Why not let them take the risk? Why try and outlaw something? Which is what these guys, you know, beings are like outlaws. Saying that God's law is higher than man's law and they do it anyway. Uh, there ain't no bite that's going to make me doubt. Uh, I'm not afraid to die. The original artist who did American Gothic, Grant Wood, if he had lived in Tennessee or Kentucky, maybe he would have painted American Gothic like this. Um, he was very much into a movement he tried to start up himself called regionalism, and that's where people paint the everyday life around them in that actual area. Um, it's probably something that has been taken up by many artists over the years. I'm not afraid to die. I ain't afraid to die. The whole snake thing really interests me though. Another artist I know of in Tennessee called uh, Eric Cunningham, or he often goes by the name Ericus Maximus, and I've included some of his pictures here. I, I find his work interesting because he is also showing the history of the area that he lives in. It's like he is what a lot of artists do is record what happens around him and so this group of paintings that he's done here forms an interesting document but not only that he's also moved from painting into constructing serpent boxes which is what a lot of these preachers use they use these serpent boxes which uh, as a herpetologist myself I don't actually see these sort of boxes used uh, we use other sort of enclosures but it's a, it's a good way of transporting snakes around and he's decorated those in his folk art style uh, my thoughts on the church that picks up serpents is that anybody can pick up a serpent if they are used to picking up serpents what we've got here is a tiger snake, it's many times more venomous than a rattlesnake. Extremely deadly venomous snake. She might be hungry too. And there it is, hallelujah, praise your God Jesus. And gently put it down again. 
didn't have to say that at all really because I don't believe but uh, this is it is a venomous snake but you see people picking up pythons and pythons aren't biting all the time same with a venomous snake it's not going to bite all the time but it's a risk that I don't normally take so if you kept doing that over and over again, one day you probably will get bitten. But if you're gentle with them, handle them with respect, they're not so bad. They're beautiful creatures. And here's my completed painting of uh, my version of American Gothic, which I call Mark 16 verse 18. I believe in, you know, you said in Mark 16, uh, those who believe, you know, shall take up serpents. And so, uh, if you're going to believe part of it, you got to believe all. It's just like uh, laying hands on the sick, you know, if you believe in that. And uh, any of the rest of it, then you've got to believe in taking up serpent because uh, if uh, he just meant for it just be one, one, the sign, see, it just wrote one, the sign, but he's got five.